just overcoming the challenge of you know your circumstances and getting out of your head the mental space was probably the hardest space to deal with where you know being concerned about what people think about you because you know, there's no way to hide a baby or a baby bump or the whole baby <laughs> belly. And it was just, it was challenging to it was. make yourself believe that you belong in these spaces where society will tell you that you don't. I'm back with another episode of So What Success Stories. Today, I'm super excited to be talking to my longtime friend, longtime friend and classmate, fellow JCM alum, Jackson Central Mayor. She is representing the Cougars today and it's right on time because we are planning our 25th Hard to believe. Look, look, hard to believe. It's our look 25th. Good. <laughs> our 25th class reunion. But this is Tanisha Johnson Pugh. And she is an IT specialist for Defense Information Systems Agency. DISA. DISA. But um, Tanisha and I, again, uh, we graduated 25 years ago together, but We've known each other since elementary school, all the way back since elementary school. And Tanisha is a, a, a not only is she an IT specialist, super, super smart woman, super strong woman, um, but she's also a super supportive woman who is a mentor and a supporter. She's one of the first people to support me and my work as a speaker in conjunction with the work that she does in the community as a, as a mentor. So super excited to be talking to Tanisha, to Tanisha and letting you hear more about my awesome friend. So Tanisha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm married, a mother of three, two grown children, one left in high school. Uh, I mostly work. I love to travel and I just I really am, I'm enjoying life right now. I think that would be what I'm doing, you know, being a good parent, being a wife, enjoying life. And so I like how she made it real simple, but uh, <laughs> so all those aspects of her business, she does them on, of, of, not her business, of her business business, but uh, she of her life, she does them on a whole other level. Some cool traveling, she's a cool parent, she's an awesome wife. Um, and so we'll get into the story because I'm sure she's going to share a little bit more there. So Tanisha, in this program, I have what I call the So What Success System. It's my belief that if anyone can learn how to overcome obstacles, eliminate excuses, and calculate choices, they can have So What Success. And that is success in spite of any challenges they face. And um, girl, we go all the way back. And I know <laughs> that you know something about So What Success. Talk a little bit about some of the obstacles that you've had to overcome to get to where you are today. Well, I would say my most defining obstacle was being a young parent, being a young parent and overcoming, I hate to say the stigmatism, all the negative connotations and associations that go with it, just not wanting to fit into that box of, you know, I'm undereducated, underemployed, on welfare, your children's futures are planned out for either being criminals or in jail, nothing good, nothing good. And so you were, you were, um, uh, you went to UT Knoxville, right? I went to UT Knoxville, but I graduated from the University of Maryland because lots of transitions happened while you were you had your son while you were um or you got pregnant with your son in knoxville right college in knoxville, i did and i did stay there as long as i could but a lot of a lot of things just bad relationships bad decisions it was easier for me to come back to jackson i actually transferred to lambda did a few years there, but I got married. So I moved to Guam. It's just a whole lot of things. I thought I would never graduate. That's what it really led to. I was like, I have failed. It was so many transitions that I was, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. 
So that's the story in and of itself, then, because uh, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. That's right. why you got pregnant as a as a college student, UT Knoxville. Um, mm-hmm. Then you got married and you moved to Guam. <laughs> so right. even getting to the graduation was a, a challenge and a huge accomplishment for yourself. You got any other obstacles you want to talk about um, or share? Being a military spouse, you know, you it's exciting in the beginning, but it's had I been thinking as a real adult person and not with the beer goggles, I wasn't drinking beer, but I will call it beer goggles. <laughs> I didn't, I was not prepared for how hard it would be to get myself established in a career. Moving every two years is difficult. It's hard to establish yourself. You, it takes so much time to find a job. I, I was just not in a good place when it came to my education, my career goals, I couldn't even really pinpoint what my career goals were at the time. How do you, how did you deal with that? How do you feel like you were able to overcome that obstacle? It, it honestly took me getting a government internship. This was after I got my undergrad degree and I just needed a job. I had church friends that told me about an internship at AETC and this was at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio. And that is how I got introduced to the field of IT, which I did not have a degree in. And that changed my whole path. I really thought I would be in HR. I couldn't get into HR even with a degree, but I got into IT and saw that they had a lot of jobs. So that pushed me to get my master's in information assurance is what it was at the time. Okay, so the second part of the So What Success System is eliminating excuses. So we have obstacles. We all have obstacles. And you talked about a few obstacles that, that you've had. Talk about those, some of the excuses you had to eliminate, to push through, to get to where you are. I think it was easier for me to eliminate my excuses because I told myself, honestly, I had the opportunity to get my master's for free. I used my husband's GI Bill. So my rationale was there was no reason for me not to. The biggest hurdle to education is the cost. A lot of times, you know, outside of planning time and things like that, but there was no reason for me not to do this. None at all. Like I had to do it. I I saw the career I could have. I just needed to get this degree. Well, talk about, because I think about the journey that you shared with the, um, Challenge again, your bachelor's degree, your undergraduate degree, right? You could have, yes. you could have easily said, "I'm a young mom, I can't go to school." You could easily said, "Okay, this is hard at UT Knoxville with my son. I can't." Go. Okay, well now I'm, I got a husband. Now I have a husband who is military, so I don't have to go. Talk about how you got past that and pushed through just to get that first degree as a young mom. Well, it was important to me to to have something for myself. I hate to say, yes, I'm, my husband and I, we are a team. But as an individual, I really felt like I could not talk about any of my personal accomplishments. And, you know, what if my marriage didn't last? What would I be able to do for myself was my biggest issue. And at the time, it was nothing. I can wave my undergraduate degree around, maybe once I got it. But I don't know. It really took, I honestly, one day I felt like I had an epiphany. I was struggling. I was, I thought I was really behind in all my classwork, like to the point of tears. Like I am behind because I was working this internship plus going to school. And I went to look at my assignments. I had worked three weeks ahead. (laughs) I I was, I was shy. I don't know. And you know, it's just a lot being a military spouse. My husband was deployed, you know, so he was in and out. We have children. It was just the pressure. It was a lot. And it really, I think it took going low for me to come high. Yeah. It's yeah. Going low. Yeah. I love that. Well, Tanisha, so I'm thinking about you in the journey again. The third part of the Soul Success System is calculating choices. And so you have made a lot of choices along the way. Um that maybe weren't even the the easiest choices. Talk about some of those choices that you've made. Well, I ended up moving. So I didn't have a choice in moving. So that was always something that I knew would happen every few years. So 
although I had a really good opportunity at Randolph, we moved here to Illinois, where I am now, and I found myself back in the same situation. At this time, when I got here, I only had my undergrad degree. I did get a job, but I hated it. Like, hate with capital all the left <laughs> hate. I was like, I do not belong here. And I was actually working in the med group on base. So that was another, to me, low point because my education, I didn't need it for that job and I really didn't like it. It was so bad that I, you know, I would cry sometimes going to work, but I have to go. But that job pushed me to get my master's plus the fact that I had money because I was sick of school. I felt like my undergrad took 20 years. That's how it felt. It did, but it felt like that. So that pushed me to go back to school go back. I need another degree. This is not enough because I had fallen out of the IT field and I couldn't get in. You know, the basis it is, I know there's so many of them, but it's all about who you know, and it's really small communities. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for me to break in. I broke in with that undergrad, the, um, my master's degree. I think I was in my first semester when I got this position that I in, I'm in right now. Well, you know, it's Tanisha, I, um, and speaking, thinking about choices, it's like you have always been a busy woman, a, a mom. You've been a mom for a very long time um, right. and a, a wife and a professional. But you've also made the choice to be somebody who gives back to, to the community. And that was something that even after we were graduated from high school, disconnected, something I felt like that really connected me heart wise to you was that we had a similar mm -hmm. passion for helping you talk about yes. your Talk about the work that you do with youth um, that you have done, the boards you've served on, and uh, and your choice to, to give back in that way. Well, initially, you know, I was just like, I don't know what my story or my life choices can do to benefit others. And I was actually at, um, we call it the CFC campaign. It's basically a giving campaign for the government and all these different charities participate. They have like a fair on base. And I found Fontabella Maternity Home. I really was not familiar with any maternity homes, but I liked what they had to say. I was a fan of the program. I was like, I feel like I can help. But the first place I helped them was IT. They really <laughs> needed some good data management. So when I initially started, I came in to organize like volunteer files and things like that. But I really felt I could be beneficial if I could work with the women that were in the, I don't even want to call it a program because they were homeless. They were living in the home. They were pregnant and living in the home. So I transitioned from volunteer and data management services to being asked to interview to sit on the board, which I did for maybe at least five to seven years. I'm losing time. I blame I know, the pandemic. Girl, that's what happens with me older many years enough to burn me out on being on the board I did it a while so just and with multiple tasks from planning galas to mentoring to whatever was needed whatever that needed to be done we did it because it was small and then it gave me that opportunity to have you come and speak because like what better example for our ladies than you to come and speak and tell your story. So it was just, it was a wonderful opportunity all the way around. Well, that was a blessing to me, you know, and I really appreciate you um, believing in me and trusting that I wouldn't embarrass you uh, that early <laughs> on <laughs> in my speaking. And it, and it was, that was uh, major for me. And I and I, I still remember, you know, some of the, the young ladies that I met and I believed in the mission of Fontabella um, and similar programs. But I also... Um, I knew your heart and again, your story as a, as a young mom. And we, you know, we talked about it, but we didn't go deep in it, but that was a journey. That was hard for you. It was through a lot of things, just overcoming the challenge of, you know, your circumstances and getting out of your head. The mental space was probably the hardest space to deal with where, you know, being concerned about what people think about you because, you know, there's no way to hide a baby or a baby bump or the whole baby belly. And it was just, it was challenging to it was. make yourself believe that you belong in these spaces where society will tell you that you don't. 
Right. And I and I applaud you for using your uh, experience to help other people because we don't we don't have to. So in addition to you serving on the board of Fontabella, I know you've been a mentor and um, and I like the conversations that you and I are able to have <laughs> about the, the fun part of mentoring and also yes. the extreme challenges, challenges. Of, yes. <laughs> of being a mentor. And I just salute you for for doing it and for being that and continuously giving of yourself uh, for young people. So, okay, so I just had to throw that in there because that's a choice. That was a deliberate choice that you made. You are a mama and you got your own life. You don't have to do that, but that's a choice that you've made and that's um, a part of who you are in your life. All right, so Tanisha, so the, with the Soul of Success System, you've proven that if you can learn to overcome obstacles, eliminate excuses and calculate choices, you can achieve so with success. But Tanisha, what is your personal definition of success? At this age, happiness, if you are happy with yourself and where you are, I'm not talking about materials or comparing yourself to others. If you can truly say you're happy with yourself, that is success to me because I feel like now, you know, wellness is an important thing to me. I'm not happy when I'm not out there doing it. Like overall, like I believe in experiences are important to me for myself and my children. So I've been most proud that I can do things and have my kids experience things that I didn't get to experience when I was younger. To I do that it. and just be out there. So be happy. I love it. I love it. Okay, last question for you. What advice would you give to someone watching this? Just general advice on, on resilience, on getting through tough times. The biggest battle to me is the mental battle. That for me was the the biggest thing, believing that I could do something because, you know, there are so many other things that I can get into about, you know, my parents, my mom and just family structure. And I felt like I was heading down a similar path that I had already seen. And it was the one thing that I didn't want to do. So it, it pushed me further into a negative headspace of you won't graduate, you won't do this, you'll be stuck in dead end jobs, not a career, just a job. Like I would never have one. So getting over the mental battle and, you know, actually doing the volunteer work and meeting people, aligning myself with people, like-minded people. Those are things that helped me push me into the volunteer work that I do now, still with children, different, but still, you know, supporting the kids and, you know, making sure they have experiences. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, that, those are words to live by. I think that is great advice. It definitely has gotten you to a great place. You live by the uh, the health thing. She's super fit. Look, I'm jealous. <laughs> no, I'm not jealous. I just need to do it. <laughs> but, I'm in the pandemic recovery. So I've been, I'm paying for it now. You don't believe it, but I'm telling you, I'm back in the office and I'm up to about four pair of pants that I can wear. I had two when I started. So I'm working my way back in my clothes. <laughs> she, look, look, I'm going to just end on that. She is a fitness role model. Uh, she, regardless of all that stuff she talking about, she is a fitness role model. And I, and I just salute you, Tanisha, for who you are, mind, body, spirit, and heart, and, um, and all that you have been to me and the support that you've shown me in the work that I'm doing. I'm just grateful to still have you as my friend. You are here. very welcome. I'm just so happy to know you. And I'm like, look, I went to school with her. We <laughs> slide on some hook. We went to school together. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Tanisha. Love you, girl. Thank you, Summer. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Love it. Love it.